guys uh welcome back to another episode um we're in a different city you know this is one of the guests that i've been bringing i've been keen on bringing him uh on the podcast is uh he was like our first original supporter you can yeah. say you know he saw our stuff and he, yeah. he's like yo man whatever you guys are doing is so dope and then i'm like you know what i'm a mook. I don't care who we got lined up. I'm like, we gotta have, we gotta, we gotta get Gary in here. Yeah, yeah, Gary yeah. Parmar, uh, yeah, man, uh, founder of you know Eco Giants Construction, yep. and uh, you know it's um, it's a beautiful story about um, you know how the company kind of started flourishing and where it came from, where it stemmed from, and that's a story that we will touch upon more and more. But man, Gary, like introduce yourself to the audience out there who might not you know know your company or might not know you as a person. You know, just give a glimpse of who you are, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, well, well, I'll start off. Uh, my name is Gary Parmar. Uh, President and CEO of Eco Giants Construction Cleaning Janitorial. Um, our business is a post construction cleaning company. Uh, we focus on post construction, janitorial, window cleaning, exterior pressure washing, uh, pretty much anything to do with cleaning. Yeah. Um, and we service currently in British Columbia, Alberta, and Ontario. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That, that's, um, and that's when one thing I'm like, man, I'm like, okay, I'm a year in Alberta too, all yeah. over. And then, yeah. And then it intrigued me as well. And then you're like, yo, let's hop on a call. I'm like, okay, say less. I'm like, let me hop on a call with him. Yeah. Hopped on a call. I'm like, instantly, I'm like, bro, this story is beautiful. Yeah. That's what it is at the end of the yeah. day, presenting stories to the people that are out there. So they can, you know, in a way relate to it, especially mm-hmm. when it's uh, unique and um, the hardships, the downs, the ups that, you know, Gary life with, from the short phone call that he has told me about. Like, I felt like I knew him so much from that, that <laughs> yeah. 20 minute phone call. That was call, a good right? conversation. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So I, it resonated with me. I'm like, man, I, I gotta have Gary on. And then, you know, and one thing, you know, let's just dive into your company, you know, where yeah. it started and everything. So originally it was founded by your... Yeah. So, so basically, um, long, long story short, um, my parents basically put my brother and I in the industry yeah. uh, when we were eight, nine years old and we were the ones, you know, taking a picture in class, you know, like a group class photo, you take it next <laughs> to the teacher, like yeah, you're yeah. standing next to the teacher, like yeah. a substitute. <laughs> that was me and my brother. So like growing up, we weren't, you know, we were always the taller guys, the bigger guys. So our parents are like age like nine and 10 basically started dragging us to janitorial contracts. Fast forward uh, 25 years. Now we're basically uh, running eco giants. Uh, it's a little bit of a pivot from what we used to do, which was yeah. janitorial. This is more so construction cleaning yeah. uh, going in before the building is occupied by tenants. So it, mm-hmm. uh, essentially we do the inside, the outside of, for an example, like a 37 story unit. We'll do inside, outside 360 degrees. That's a lot of cleaning, yeah, obviously. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so mainly that's what we do. Uh, been in the industry pretty much my whole life. Uh, told myself a long time ago when I started the business that, um, well, my, my brother and I started the business that if we're doing this, we're doing it the right way. Right way. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like we're not going to do this. You know, I used to see my parents make so many mistakes growing up and be like, okay, mom, dad, like reach out to this person yeah. or don't reach out to that person or let's not work with that person or work with this or let's market here or do this. And, and, you know, I feel like a lot, learned a lot of trial and errors growing up yeah. in the business and just learning from it. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a boring business. I mean, I mean, not everybody is in the cleaning business, but yeah. I feel like if you do something, you're willing to do it. You got to do it right. Right. Do it right. right? Exactly. So 100%. yeah, man. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely been a ride. It's yeah, been a, right. it's been a journey, man. A lot of ups and downs for sure. Yeah. And starting yeah. with that, I think um, you realizing that pivoting aspect of it. I mean, one, like, you know, that's uh, no audience that they know, like your mother passed away uh, due to cancer. Yeah. Uh, you can get more depth in that, what kind it was. And yeah. then your dad passed away couple of years later on yeah yeah heart attack so yeah you know those people you look at as role models of course they taught you the industry yeah of like not even industry taught you about life of course what how to present yourself how to carry yourself how yeah. to be in a business setting what to do what not to do so mm. now you see your role models pass away that taught yeah. you everything about life of course yeah. like, of course that 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 would take anybody in a dark place oh for sure yeah. and, and uh, you know and that's one thing I commend you, man, is uh, it's not easy. And my condolences to your family. I know it's been, you know, it, it will never heal. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it's my condolences to your family. You know, appreciate it's it, something that nobody should, you know, it's not easy to deal with, man. No, I appreciate it's it, not, man. In fact, that you guys had your have, head held high, you know. One thing that I truly found inspiring is you wanted to carry forward what they built. Yeah. A yeah. lot of the time, man, that yeah. gets overlooked, man. Your yeah. parents gave everything they could to us and yeah. built something for us. Yeah. Rather than you guys being like, man, like, Cholo, whatever it was, let's just do our own thing. <laughs> yeah. You do your own thing. Brother, like, I'll do my own. And then you have a sister as well. Correct? I don't know. I don't have a sister. I got a lot of uh, <laughs> sister cousins, <laughs> yeah. but not a sister. Yeah. yeah. You and uh, my, my brother is married, so I do have okay. a sister. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's look at that. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah. You and your brother. And then uh, yeah. think about it. Like, you guys could have been like, you know, man, this is it. Yeah. But instead, you guys pivoted off that. You guys fueled that. Be like, yeah. you know, let's take this to something that our parents 
like whatever they are, they're gonna be like, man, I'm glad we did whatever we could for our kids to to see them succeed now. For sure, mm-hmm. for you know? sure. Yeah. And then take us through that journey, man. Yeah, how man. Everything kind of you guys, brother, yeah. kind of narrated that whole situation, man. Yeah, man. I mean, like this. Discla- and how old were you, sorry? Yeah, no, no, no. Please, please. Yeah. Disclaimer, man. And, and, and I'll just say it. Like my brother and I, we hated the cleaning industry growing yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Okay. If and if you could only imagine, like. We're, you know, grade five, six, everyone's going to football practice or soccer <laughs> practice, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're getting dragged out by our parents after school to work, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And it wasn't work like normal, like, oh, we work till seven or eight. No, we're working till 12, 12 o'clock, o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, whatever it took, you know? Yeah. And I think like it all kind of originated just with like growing up in the industry and not really liking it and not wanting to be a part of it. Then to seeing like all of the struggles that our parents went through, like, for example, like when my mom had cancer and oh. Oh nine, I remember she would still like she's going through chemotherapy, but she's still answering the phone and like picking up the phone and like, yes, uh, how can I help you? And I'm just like watching her resilience in that situation. I was like, dude, like who am I? Like in those moments, I'd probably run away from the jobs, the cleaning jobs, or not want to do it. Yeah. And it was it wasn't actually until she actually passed mm. that we like kind of took a step back and we realized we're like, yo, like you know, she really really put in work for yeah. us, like. You know, she, you know, our home, uh, you know, the way she left the home, the, all the things that she instilled in my brother and I, the resilience, Mm -hmm. the, you know, you know, never give up. Like, you know, uh, any job, you know, it's never too big or too small. Small, You know what I mean? Like all these little things really for us was like the stepping stone to our business. Like the resilience, the way we carry ourselves, the way we are, we're not afraid to go after big jobs or big clients, like at all, because we've been through the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, just to touch a little bit on like, you know, how we kind of started Eco Giants and how it all happened was, um, you know, one day I was talking to my brother in 2016 and, uh, my mom had passed away in 2013 from cancer. Yeah. And, uh, during that time, my brother and I kind of, you know, I, I was working in the bar industry, started as security, worked my way up to general manager. My brother was doing a, a great uh, job working as loss prevention, now a, a regional member and, and, and we were moving forward in life. And then something just kept calling us like, you know what, man? Mom didn't work this hard to for nothing, nothing you know. And, yeah. I, and I just remember one day I just had this moment. I just said, you know what, Jess, if you know what, we're gonna build the Rolls Royce of cleaning. Like we're just gonna build the, like the best of the best, best, best customer service, best people, best culture. I mean, I want my company to have benefits. I want to be in different provinces. I want to do all these different yeah. things. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it was just like about building something proper, new, but also in the memory of our parents. parents really, yeah. like like that was the biggest thing. I mean, if if you were to ask me if my parents were around, would I do this? I don't think I'd have the heart for it mm. because I grew up hating this business. Yeah, it's like the moment my mom passed away, I like I found my oh, oh okay, like she started something. Yeah, yeah, I need to finish it. Yeah, like that right. was it. One second, no we'll, problem, we'll, brother. We'll, we'll no worries, no worries, no worries, no worries. Yep. No worries. Yep. Is it because of the camera or is it because of the lighting? No, I just like the chair. Are <laughs> oh, you too tall, man? Yes. No, it's not. No, it's not. You can just. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll hold on. To what? Turn on the floor. Right in the middle. Like, no, no, no. I'll put it on the ground. So I left it there. Forward? He's came forward? Yeah. Okay, okay. That's what you just get. <laughs> We're gonna make this work. Alright, All right. that's better. Cool. That camera's facing both of us, right? Yeah. Okay, screw it. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no worries, brother. No worries. It's all about the angles, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You're too tall and he's sitting there. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Let's start with that. Let's start with that. <laughs> so the camera guy just fucking child. How do you feel about that? <laughs> We're going to keep that in. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate right. you, man. Appreciate um, you. Yeah. But yeah, now, my gear continuing yeah. on, as you said, your mom's legacy and everything yeah, that you man. wanted to it, do. Yeah, man. Honestly, bro, it just started with mom's legacy, man. Like, continuing on mom's legacy. Like, you know, she worked so hard in this industry. She she raised us. She there was times where you know we didn't have money for a lot of things, man. And we just had to make it work. It mm-hmm. really was. It came down to it. Like mom would tell us everything, how much the mortgage was at a very young age, how much like the hydro was for it. My brother and I learned at a very young age how to how to, how to fend for ourselves and how to mm-hmm. cook cook our own meals and take care of the household and yeah. dishes and capre and you know <laughs> what I mean. Like yeah. you know, like I just I still remember getting the phone calls from my mom. Like she'd be taking a break from work and she'd be like. Make sure you do your bed. <laughs> I mean, how do you have the time? time. <laughs> like, you still giving me those phone calls, man. It's like I'm, the biggest things I miss nowadays. Like, 
like you know w- one of the things i do nowadays you know my wife and i we, we make our bed together like every morning okay. and 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 like i don't even sh- i've never shared this even with her but subconsciously every morning it's like i hear my mom saying, saying make yeah. your bed so it's like i make my bed every morning just to have that sense of like i did something that my mom would always ask me to do you know what i mean i may not touch the dishes that often but i just say like the bed is usually my thing like i yeah. get that thing looking sleek and i i can't start my day until that you know what i mean so yeah. it's a small yeah. thing that you yeah. reminisce over for sure like, that's something yeah. that for sure that you know you can't forget you, no of course remember, man you know? no man no so, and, and and that's one of the beautiful thing man like i i think them looking down at you and your parents i think that's something i can from a short period, I know I think that's something they can look down and be like, man, I'm proud of what you guys have done. For sure. And, and I mean that, man. It's not easy to take a, such a like an outcome, what, you guys 10 years back, you guys are 24, yeah. 23. I was 26. My brother was 24 when, yeah, when like, mom passed, yeah, and, and when we started the business, yeah. And yeah. bro, and that, you're just figuring out your yeah. individual self at that time. Yeah, man, yeah. Right? yeah. Like, um, and then you guys got hit with this, yeah. something that I can't even fathom losing my parents, or like any of them, and, yeah. and to go through that, decipher all that, and then to pivot through your own career, and then you pivot back to... No man, they started this. We gonna finish it. Oh, of course, man. Right? Yeah, man. So to yeah. have that mindset, it's uh, it's truly commendable. Appreciate That's something it. I think a lot of people can take away from because a lot of people tend to be like, oh, I don't resonate with this, as you said. Yeah. You might not like that business, but thing is, yeah. like, th- th- this is a different type of um, gratification you get yep. of something that you can hold so endearing, and also it can resonate your parents. Like no, for sure, man. Name and like, see, whatever they put behind. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, yeah. T- that's one of the things that we tell like uh, people out there, the audience is like, what, what should you say like with people that have trouble finding their way in family business or they struggle with it? But like, man, I don't, I don't like doing this, man. Like, why am I doing this? Like, what were the one tips you would give to the people that they might struggle with, you know, t- taking in part of uh, family businesses? Yeah, you know, you know, you, you, you know, now that I'm an adult and now I actually look back at my parents' life, like I'm, like I'm 35 and I, I try to put my my perspective back to when my parents were 35 yeah man they were really just trying to figure things out like could you imagine being here in the 90s in canada like (laughs) you know they they come from india they're they're trying to get any job they can working saving money mom's making roti dad's working hard like everyone's doing their part you know what i mean like my mom worked dishwashing jobs for four dollars an hour you know what i mean and then she was a nurse you know what i mean so like there's so many like in my eyes the way i see it is don't look at your parents and what they're doing as like a like a bad thing yep. like don't be like man i'm gonna get sucked into this for the rest of my life like for <laughs> example like if your parents have like a sweet shop like you know like like or a restaurant like you should i hate to say this but it's like you should look forward to spending some time this extra time with your parents because yeah. at the end of the day the way our dna as humans are set up is we're supposed to outlive our parents right yep. yeah. and one thing i always look back on man is like Jesse and I had so much time with our parents. It was freaking ridiculous. Like, it was yeah. ridiculous. Like, if I now think about it, everyone's parents are always going to work. I went to work with my parents for years. Like, years, like yeah. years and years. 15, 16, 17 years. Saw them 24-7. Like, my mom was my best friend. We talk about everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like it, was, it was crazy. So, it's like, for me personally, my recommendation would be like, look, they need you. They can't trust anybody but you. You're, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, like, You're blood, like, 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 straight up, yeah. suck it up and do it. Do it like, yeah. like, do it because at the end of the day, this is what they're gonna remember. Yeah. And at the end of the day, who do you think they're doing it for? Yeah. My my dad used to make a weird comment to my brother and I, be like, "We're leaving it for you guys," and we'd be like, "Dad, calm down, man." Like, <laughs> yeah. saying, right? And yeah. I I today literally think about that all the time. Yeah. That those little comments that he would make is were it's all going to you guys at the end of the day, yeah, and yeah. and they were right. It all did come to us, hmm. and it's our job now to harness it hold on to it make it bigger, bigger yeah. you know what i mean and um yeah man I, i'll just my advice would be just suck it up and do it yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> come yeah. on like you got this yeah. your parents are struggling your parents struggled before they got here like you got this you, got you put this, in a few yeah. a few years of sweat sweat for your parents is not going to kill you, kill you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean true. yeah there's so. um there's another aspect of i wanted to talk about the family business part yeah so what you guys have done is is amazing like you guys took your family business and you expanded it in different in different areas. Yeah, and that's yeah, it. Yeah. But you'll, I mean, I don't know how many kids do this nowadays, but though there are some kids who are born into that family, sure. who are in that family, and you know they they're you know their parents tell them to like, hey, run the business and stuff like that, take it from there. Yeah, it'll be better for you instead of struggling. Right. You know, from outside world. Right. But now you see these kids, man. It's just like because they have that comfort. Sure. They're like, oh, what, I need to put in work. Yeah. I have the money. Yeah. My 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 parents have done the work for me. Yeah. And they're just sitting there 
you know, that's collecting the cash, whatever, whatever profit it is, yeah. and enjoying the life. Yeah. And that's, that's the one debate is between is like, okay, you're running in a family business. You're running a family business. Why aren't you doing anything about it? Yeah. Like why are you staying so comfortable about it? Because sure. you have other people out here who are struggling entrepreneurs yep. who are barely, who are in debt. Yeah. Who are struggling every day trying yeah. to put food on the table. Yeah. And you're over here just sitting on your ass not doing anything just because your family took the, your, your parents struggled hard enough just yeah. to, you know, yeah. to put you in that position. So yeah. I wanted to get your perspective on that. Man, I just think that our generation, you know, and not to talk to diss anybody, but I think the further along we're getting towards monetizing things and, you know, AI and all this stuff, yeah. we're gearing more towards just laziness, laziness right? Like uh, yeah, one thing about the cleaning cool. industry is you you won't, not yet, but you won't find a robot post doing yeah. the cleaning of your window or, yeah. or the inside. So we are a very labor-based business and, yeah. and you know, we, we, you know we, we have to put in the work. Yeah. Um, but I, I completely get what you're saying, man. I, I, I just feel like for people like that, man, like they just need to realize that at the end of the day, you could lose it all. Like, oh, yeah. like I, live, I live every single day in the fear that it doesn't matter how big our business gets or small it is or whatever. I live in fear every single day that my one client that's pissed off or not ex accepting our work, yeah. they could ruin our reputation. reputation they could yeah. ruin our name. Mm -hmm. And that's a fear I live with every single day. And I feel like if you don't have that, if you don't live with that fear, yeah. you will not succeed in business. Because in business, it is all about this. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is about this. this yeah. You're going to hit the ground face flat so many times you won't even keep count anymore yeah because you've been through it so many times that your only way of dealing with that is getting up getting up you yeah. know what i mean yeah but the problem here is if i now hand you a hundred million dollar business mm. okay shabash i gave it to you cool yeah. as a father i might feel proud of myself but what did i give you what skills did i give you i just mm. gave you the hundred million dollar business all right you might run it for five years ten years but I bet you eventually, if you're not running it with fear yeah. and, 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 and a good chip on your shoulder, business is out. I mean, I could be wrong, right? But, I, but I, I'm going to say majority of guys will lose their businesses because they don't, they don't live with that fear. And I think that if you're going to, the way I see business is like this. If, if, if tomorrow I wasn't running Eco Giants, I would hire somebody who is more obsessive than me in my mm. business. Mm. You need to run my business like I, you're more obsessed than in my business, business than, than I am. Yep. Yep. That's the only way I'll give the reins up. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way it should be with the parents. You know, My wife and I have this conversation all the time. When we have kids, they want to go out to the movies. You know, you want to go watch the new Diljeet movie? Oh, no problem. <laughs> you're going to mow the lawn, yeah. right? You're going you're gonna to take down some things for dad. You're going you're gonna to maybe, maybe going to wash the fleet of vehicles. Yeah. Then we're going to give you 25 bucks. Well, oh, yeah. you need popcorn? Oh, hold up. The backyard needs some cleaning too. <laughs> like, you have to earn it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. My brother, me, my sister-in-law, and my wife. Yeah. One thing the four of us have is that we've all worked for what we have. Yeah, like, we good. don't, we, handouts are nice, inheritance yeah. are nice, and all that good stuff yeah, but yeah. but we we literally the four of us have to struggle and fight and claw for what we have yeah. you know so so i mean it's i want to say um i know what it feels like to take over the business but it's like like i don't know what it feels like to take over a huge successful business you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. but but i could only imagine if you don't have the right chip on your shoulder if you don't have the right mindset, mindset it, yeah, yeah. it's not gonna go very well yeah, yeah. you know you're gonna be confused a, 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 a lot, lot of the time lot you know what time. i mean so People yeah. don't understand that. Like as you said, it's like passing a you can pass the keys to the car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes you can just start it, that's fine. But the yeah. thing is, until you don't understand the value of that particular car when it comes to the how it's built, yep. how it runs, how you maintain it, yep. that's what a business is. Yep. How is it run? How do you maintain it? How do you improve the quality exactly, of this car yeah. over a period of time? Yeah. When you don't understand the utilization of what that is, you'll never succeed. And that's no, exactly. due to the comfort of easiness and not willing to put hard work, man. Uh, yeah. Like, and it's straying away now, just due to the fact that the environment and the culture we're creating mm -hmm. is to baby the feelings of the kids, and yeah. that's one of the things you probably, as a dad, can probably relate to to a certain extent. Is mm -hmm. as you said back in the day, when well, my mom and dad, they're like, "Oh, you want something? Like, start work, work for it." Exactly. Started working at Subway when I was like fourteen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I didn't buy my own phone because I couldn't ask my parents because they didn't have much. Exactly. I finally got my first phone. I was in grade twelve. It's yeah. an Android. It's like because I had to work <laughs> yeah. my ass to get yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's like yeah. everybody expects a handout at grade like you ten years old. You yeah, want an yeah, iPhone? Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like it's yeah. like it's like these handouts. Like our ki our parents are not taking that initiative to yep. be like, no, it, it gotta be this way. If it's yep. not, yep. Okay, go get it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go somewhere else. We can't yeah. baby people's feelings. And I can see where the parents are coming from because when the parents struggle 
the way they did. Yeah. Facing racism and, you know, growing up in Surrey, Vancouver, I could only imagine, man, like how it was in the 90s. And it's a little better now. Yeah. You face it every now and then. But the way racism was, it's like you have to give them the credit where it's really due, man. Like, yeah. come on. Like, your parents really went through this, like, to give you a better life. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, it just moving forward in life and just the way you handle yourself, it shows a lot about yourself. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the turmoil, yeah. the turmoil is always going to be with your parents. The reason yeah. what I say turmoil not like something that's some, um, that can't be fixed. Yeah. You're never going to see eye to eye when it comes to majority of the things, no. whether it's the way you view life, right. how you perceive it. You, you know, the atmosphere and environment has changed, right? Yep. Yep. But you can't expect them to embrace it with the same arms that you embrace it with. No, mm. no. You can't. Right. Like, and thing is, like, it's hard for them to understand the life because, as you said, they do come from a different, different perspective. I, yeah. I could never fully understand my dad. I, I, half of the time, I have the, the struggle with, like, I don't understand you, like, and you know, do you want to change, right? But then again, I'm like, okay, if I quit on him, there's no growing. Mm. Sure. So yep. for me, it's like, okay, I got to keep at it in a sense. As hard as that sounds, people are like, oh, like, you know, like, it's not for your job, but then it is. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's your job. It, yeah. Everything we do and we want to put forth, it's our responsibility yeah. teaching yeah. whether it's your mom. Like, I, my mom is my best friend. I can talk to anything, everything I want to because I created that environment. Right. People, they say they can't. They haven't tried. Yeah. Like they run, they run away from those situations because they're like, it's too much pressure. Yeah. Like, they're not going to change their mind, but it's just how you address it. Like, yeah. even with my, my dad, my best friend. Yeah. Like I talked to him about everything, dating, everything like that. Yeah, he fucking yeah. loves it. He's like, oh, that's yeah. how it is now? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. He's like, no wonder you're single. I'm like, okay, chill. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's the thing with yeah. even my dad. Like there was one moment where he was saying, like, he's like, I'm proud of you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, no. I was like, I'm not saying that in a negative way. Yeah. But I was like, I haven't made myself worth. Yeah my worth enough to uh yeah. for you to for you to see it yeah because the amount of work that you put in yeah where i was in the back seat like i was eating like because he was a pizza delivery yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. during the night yeah taxi driver during the day yeah sit in the back you know i had a small bread sticks and stuff like that yeah man i'll see him going in and out of car uh, house like dropping a pizza <laughs> at times he was put a, a knife point and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like how dare i complain yeah. yeah yeah you can't you have no reason to man too much um yeah we have too much privilege and um to complain you know one thing i want to touch upon is like yeah. that quote by 50 cent what does he say yeah. he's like this can be looked at a negative or positively yeah. i think you maybe you guys know he, he says if you're a man he's like and if you're depressed or you're doing this he's like that's a luxury <laughs> I, mm, I, I think you watched that i got way too much time on your your hands yeah. man. if you're stressing about things like don't don't even mean anything to your life you know yeah. and you say yeah. you're yeah. depressed or like oh i can't it do this actually. or can't do that oh yeah he's like if you have time for that he's like that's a luxury and oh yeah th think about 50 cent story what, yeah. what was it like yeah mom was a freaking dope dealer dad wasn't around yeah. mom was a g she yeah. got killed yeah her, gra her grandmother raised him yeah came from nothing to something even during those dark times, he's yeah. like, man, he's like, I found a way to hustle oh, yeah. and provide. He's yeah. like, the day he's like, I gave up on life and be like, oh, life is shit, this, that. He's like, that's the day you lose yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but now, imagine you say that to someone today. Be like, hey, yo, depression is a, like, that's a luxury to have yeah, as a canceled man. Canceled right away. Canceled right, right yeah. away. <laughs> it's like, why is yeah. that canceled? Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. that's called fucking real shit. Yeah. That's what it takes being a man in this world. That's what it takes. Yeah, you, you can't. You you might throw a pity party today, but tomorrow you gotta get your ass up and figure yeah. that shit out. It's not yeah. supposed to be easy. Yeah, like how how can he pursue life, life uh, if everything was just a straight line? Everything sure. was easy going. Yeah. like what? Well, how can he call that life? Yeah, right. Well, when people say they're depressed, man, I mean, if you're really depressed, you're depressed. But it's like sometimes you look at certain people and they're like, "Oh man, I'm depressed." My like, bro, you're depressed every day. Like you got too much time <laughs> oh, on your yeah. hands. Like like I sometimes say to people like. Oh man, aren't you depressed doing this, this? I'm like, bro, I don't got time to be depressed. depressed. Like, I just yeah. don't have time for it. Like, I would love to sit there and sulk and, yeah. and, 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 oh, this happened in my life and that happened. I'm like, no, man, I got to keep moving forward. You know what yeah. I mean? So, I mean, you know, one thing I was touch on with my, you know, with, with our mom, it's like, even like after my mom had passed, I think my brother and I took off like one or two days worth of work, literally. And again, people grieve in different ways, in different but ways, yep. my brother and I, our mentality literally went into work. work like, yeah. we need to now, like before if we were a little lazy if we had that little thing in our like oh i don't want to do it do oh it. that does not exist anymore it's like we have to now become men take over the household like do yep. everything like it's our job to do the dishes, do dishes it's yeah. our job to cook the food it's our yeah. job to take the clothes downstairs it's our job to pay the bills you know what yeah. i mean so yep. 
you know, these things all kick in, bro. And I feel like there's a lot of people that either they run from that situation yeah. or they rise. And it's yeah. like, it's, it's, you're either or, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, you, can, you can't be a you Debbie know? down ass person, man. No, man, no, you, you can't. You can, you're a Debbie down ass yeah. person. Nobody cares, yeah. man. Go yeah. get what you want. There's no reason for you not to get exactly. what you can. No. You, like, even a story yeah. by yourself with the yeah. company, yeah. it's not like, so, hey, yeah. Gary, this is what you got to do. Do it this way. Yeah. This is how you get X amount of money. Yeah. There's no certainty that you're going to succeed in that business. There's no certainty. Sure. There's never no certainty yeah. when it comes to business. Yeah. Because something that, as you said, a reputation could go down due to these couple of clients. Yeah. Mm. Everybody matters. And how you treat someone that gives you 100 and then how you treat someone that pays you 1000 is an epitome of your character as Absolutely, a person. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, and, and the day yeah. you forget that, be like, nah, I'm going to focus on the high one. Like, I don't yeah. care about the 100. Yeah. Is the day you will fail as yeah. a businessman in, in life in general. Yeah. Yeah. You can't look at it from a skewed perspective and like, okay, how do I get what I want? It's like, what are you putting forward to get that? Yeah. yeah. I always tell it. people, man, like, no one's ever, like, and I don't know if, how, if, if life works this way. No one's going to come and drop a million bucks in your lap. lap. Oh, never no. going to happen. No. You, you can keep praying and <laughs> writing things and having these, like, vision boards and everything. But if you're not going <laughs> to execute on your plan. Yeah. Like, I, I remember one of our biggest goals was to do a million dollars in revenue with, with our business. business yeah. And, I mean, like, when we hit that, I was like, oh, my Lord. Like, I couldn't even believe it. Because yeah. I remember... It was so far that the idea of that was so far when we had the idea of Eco Giants and we were, you know, the the office space was the uh, walk-in closet oh, of our house right now. Like, yeah, literally, yeah. like my yeah. brother and I couldn't uh, have our chairs back to back. You know what I mean? Like it was that bad. And now we're in a big office with revenue and with staff. And I'm like, man, I could only imagine being here. Yeah. I could only imagine. But I remember execution, putting a plan together. Um, every single year I go to Staples, I buy a book and I write all my ideas in there. I write five personal goals, five business goals. Ever since my mom passed away, I started, actually, it was the book that I had to write all my responsibilities down. <laughs> Mortgages this much, this much, literally yeah, like a yeah. week after mom had passed October, you know, it was, I think, uh, the 20th in 2013. And I wrote everything down, every bill, every payment, how much I had in my checkings account, how much I had in my savings account. And at the same time I wrote. I'm going to start my own company and I'm going to make a million dollars one day. And I remember one Crazy. day I looked back at that book and like, you know, five, six, seven books later, and I'm looking at the first thing on that page was that, that you know yeah, what I mean? That's so, insane, man. so, so, <laughs> and again, it's not to like flaunt, flaunt it's to yeah. literally say that if you say it, okay, cool. It's out in the universe, but you got to do it. Do it. You got yeah. to execute it. And if there's a, what, what I would say, if this is your end goal here, if yeah. it's a million dollars, work backwards. backwards. Yeah, don't yeah. work, don't work step one, step two, step three. Figure out what your end goal is and work backwards to figure out what the plan is to get you there. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then start from step one. Yep. Start from yeah. step one when you figure that out. And you even take I mean? the smallest steps possible of too. Because the thing is like, even I had a problem with this myself too. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Because my thing was like, by 35, I need to have everything figured. I'm not yep. saying everything figured out. Sure. But majority yeah. of the stuff that I want, I, 35 is my deadline. Yeah, yeah, five, yeah. More, five more years because yeah. I was like, okay, I put in, I put in work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I failed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at least I learned from it. But I was like, yeah. by 35 is the age. I don't give a fuck how much I have to sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I even uh, like, because I was like, Amber and I is, Amber and I work at a job that we don't want to work at. Fair, right? Yeah. And just even for yourself, you did security. Yes. You didn't really see yourself doing security as a long-term game it was just a step in that yeah sense. i mean yeah no definitely doing security pulls a toll on you man yeah yeah, yeah. i mean sure definitely did security bartering all that good stuff like yeah. it was fun it was exciting but it's like how many times are you gonna get in front of a fight or how many times are you gonna get yeah, in front yeah. of yeah. you know put your body out there for someone yeah. and i i just remember one day just looking at myself being like man it's, it's not my life right. like i'm not yeah. gonna, yeah. i don't want to be this big my whole life you know yeah. what i mean like you know so yeah. you know but yeah it, it's definitely like you got to find your calling, man. That's yeah, like the biggest thing, you know? And like, even, you know, how you talk about like, you know, an age, right? Like even for me, like in my, my brother is younger than me and my brother got married first. Yeah. I didn't get married till literally like 34 years old. You know what okay. I mean? So, so, so for a lot of people, it's like, oh, this guy didn't get married in his twenties. Yeah. He waited till his thirties. Well, no, I had goals. My goals was to get my business to a certain point revenue wise. My, my goal was to pay off my mom's house. Yeah. My goal was to get my business into three provinces. And I told my, my current wife, like my, my current wife, my <laughs> wife, that's what I take that out. Um, my wife, my, my wife, I remember when we were dating, I told her, I yeah. said, I got these three goals. Yeah. The moment I hit those three goals, like I'm ready to get married. Right, but until yeah. I hit those three goals, I can't. Yeah. And I remember like, like, you know, even when I hit them, she kind of looked at me, gave me the wink. She's like, we good now? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we good. I honestly believe like what it came down to was if I go off the pressure of my grandparents, like I have 
both sets of grandparents still alive. Yeah, thank oh, God, okay. right? Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah, and, wood. you know, and, and they always used to say to me, right? Like, tu ni kita, right? Like, tu yeah. ni and I used to say, I have two to three goals right now. Once I hit those goals, I promise you, with the way you want it, however you want it, yeah, if you're going to get it. it. Yeah. But I just need to get to this. Yeah. Once I get to this, whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever you want. And you I think the that's important thing is what you noted is that you set up goals yeah. before marriage. Yeah. Right? Because the thing now is, it is, is like, I'm not saying that a man has to get married in 20s. I don't think they should. I don't think they should either. At, at all. Yeah. should be no pressure. Because the yeah. thing is exactly. like... Exactly, no pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, woman, that's another perspective. Mm -hmm. But my, my thing is just like, if you don't set out goals and you don't accomplish those goals before putting, uh, bringing someone else into your life, depending on the person that you bring in, it could work maybe, but it does become more difficult. Because you have a lot more responsibilities that's some, that's someone else in your life too, right? Yeah. Whether it be kid, you have kids, you have your wife, or whatever it may be. Because your sole focus should be just accomplish those goals. Yeah. Until those goals are not finished, you should not be allowing someone yeah. else in your life. At all. And and marriage is not like it's not okay. Like if we talk about back in the day, the way our parents wanted to do things, they wanted yeah. us to get married first, then figure out figure our life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the world we live in is we're trying to figure our lives out first, first. then we're trying to get, get married. married. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we've also seen when you're in your twenties and you haven't figured yourself out and you marry the wrong person. What ends up happening? You divorce that divorce person, divorce. or or you're in a really toxic relationship, right? Yeah. And is one thing I like. Me and my wife, we talk about this all the time. Is like when her and I started dating, we had reached some goals in our lives, some milestones in our lives. Okay. But we also like kind of said to each other, like, I don't need you, you don't need me. But when we come together, yeah, it's a beautiful where thing. it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. Yeah. And and honestly, like you know, we you know her culture being different and my culture being different. Yeah. Even us coming together, it like defines all odds. It <laughs> speaks on exactly who I am. The yeah. resilience and like yeah. doing things like that are kind of out of the norm or whatever. But yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's literally like like everyone's like, oh yeah, Gary would do that, right? So, <laughs> but but you know, it's just like I think that if you haven't hit your goals bringing on a partner or a, or putting like a marriage into that situation Put it's marriage. so stressful yeah because yeah. marriage itself is stressful yeah. right oh, yeah, yeah. i my wife might like something a certain way i might like something a certain way uh, you know thankfully we figured it out but a lot of people in our culture when they get together and now they're living together for the first time yeah man you drop those socks bro it is like world war three right <laughs> you know what i mean like like there's so many you things that you don't do anything right right, <laughs> right? Like, why is your dish over here right but but i feel like but but you know in you know not to say like the you know woman's right or man's right but at the end of the day everyone has their own way like yeah, yeah. treat your own yeah. but you have to adapt to one another that's yeah. the whole point of marriage like you, you falling in love with each other you have to love each other for your your goods and your bads you know yeah. what i mean and that's just what it comes down to, man. At the end of the day, if you if you get married too young, you haven't figured yourself out. You're arguing with your spouse. You're you, you really. I, I just don't think that you have a good grasp on what where you want to be in life. Yeah. Really, and, you know? and, the, and the important thing yeah. I, I do want to mention too, because people might assume like, okay, you should not be in a relationship at all. No, no, no. What I'm saying, saying what I'm saying is, saying there's that. a huge difference between relationship and marriage. Yes. Right. If you can find someone that is like a ride or die with you, yeah. and can understand that you have a purpose in life and yep. you're trying to get to there. Yep. Bro, that type of relationship, man, I would say to those men that have that type of woman in your life, yep. stop having your, stop looking around and look at what you actually have in your life. Absolutely, Because those are the type of women that are really tough to find, especially with how social media and all this bullshit is going around. Totally, man. Mm. And second of all, man, is like, if you're going to, let's just say, if you're going to go into, you're, if you're going to have married, like, you're going to get married before your life is set, just remember this one thing. Majority of relationships, marriage break up because of one, because of what? Financials. Financial money, yeah. usually. Yeah. That's a yeah, main yeah. underlying yeah. factor that right? usually tears everybody apart. And that's what yeah. we talked about previously, too. It's like, yeah. like, obviously, we're not married, but, you know, you, we are in a relationship where we talk about these yep. things, right? Like, yep. okay, I tell my mom, like, I tell my dad, my mom, like, yo, I got to hit X amount of money per month or year for me to even think about, okay, I'm going to bring another person in. Until right. then, I'm like, there's no way I can't do that. I'm like, yeah. I'm setting myself up for a disaster knowing sure. that what yeah. I want. So, yeah. but, you know, kind of straying away from like that, not straying away, kind of like diving into that as well. Like, yeah. The relationship wise, like you yeah. obviously, you married someone in our culture. You yep, probably yep. got freaking crucified by your <laughs> you know, you know what's, yeah, man, You know what's crazy? My family actually, like, no, man, like my, my, my family was like fully open. So, like, my wife, she's a Somali, right? Mm -hmm. So, she's a Somali Muslim. So, you know, when we first started dating, um, you know, she kind of asked me straight up, she's like, hey, um, you like, you're Punjabi, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. She's like, like are you okay with this like your family okay with this and i was like i, I just kind of looked at her and i said you don't have to worry about my family and you know didn't want to get into obviously the logistics of everything that's you know in my life but i'm like you're you're good you're good, you're good. Yeah. and uh you know obviously 
you know, first time I ever came to her house, the way I was accepted, the way I see that Zara talks to her mom and dad, the way she takes care of them, the way she um, handles situations with her family. I could just tell how great of family she had come from. Like, yeah. like you know, like in our in, in the Punjabi culture, we go, oh, like, uh, you know, I don't want to speak ill, but like, you know, Muslim or this, you're not supposed to uh, marry out, outside your yeah, caste, God you're not supposed to marry God outside God. your yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah. And I and I honestly, like, my mom taught me how to believe in, you know, you know, Babaji Guru and also, you know, Hinduism and every every culture that's out there, bro. She's always told me that at the end of the day, you have there's one God and you have to be open towards that. Mm -hmm. And I always live my life that way. Like like at the end of the day, yes, I'm a Sikh. I, I I'm proud to be a Sikh, but I I will never diss another culture or anything. Yeah. So let alone coming into that relationship, it was like if you're already gonna look at me and say, oh, like is something you know something off? You, yeah. Is something off in my culture? I'm like that's like the last thing I'm looking at. That's like the last. That's a conversation for like the elders. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. my conversation. And just just the way I've always carried myself, man, and 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 vice versa. The way Zara is with our family, she matha takes up the gudwara. Yeah. She does all the cultural stuff. When our wedding happened, yeah. we did our jago, we did our manya, every single thing. Wow. Um, I got we got married, um, obviously like the Sikh way, but we also did right after we picked up the guru grand sub. He had walked away, and then we also did the Ismaili version of the nikka, which oh, was okay. about a five to ten minute uh, recital of their of Put their on. stuff. So yeah. again. And opening up to that and 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 being open to that was all taught to me in the yeah. beginning, you know? Like, yeah. I could be that guy who was like, no, I can't marry you. And I'm yeah. sure, you yeah. know, there's situations like that all the time. But it's like, again, I'm that guy who goes against the grain. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'm not that way. And, and you know, again, anybody getting into the relationship that's different, I would say, like, if you're, if you're in love and you're with the right person who sets you right, calls you out on the right stuff, and, like, is actually wanting the best for you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What her background is, what her culture is, it does not matter. matter. And I think that's a matter. good thing a lot of you can tell people that as well. Yeah. Some people that are probably are getting married now, but a lot of them will be afraid to bring someone, let's say, a kid in their life. Sure. Because now, you know, to a certain extent, everybody probably has a thought process. But like, okay, how is our kid going to infuse into this family where, okay, we are two different religions. So yep. there is going to be curiosity on the kid's side, but like, or, you know, dad, like, how do we just, and how do you decipher that, like, in regards to your kids mm. when it comes to, when, like, Islam or whether yeah. your kid's about like, Sikhism? Like, how do you yeah. decipher that, man? Like, it's a great question, man. And, you know, it, again, conversations that my wife and I have all the time is like, when we do have kids, how are we going to navigate this? How are we, what, what are we, are we going to pull them one way or push them one way? And I said, look, if we follow my mom's way of teaching, let them be open let them gear towards whatever they want. Yep. One thing our kids will always do is respect Fact. both cultures, mm. just like mom does, just like dad does. But at the end of the day, if my kids, like for example, my my brother is Sikh too, but my brother is married to, like his wife is uh, Christian Punjabi. She's oh, Punjabi, okay. but she's Punjabi Christian, Christian, right? Yeah, like yeah. you come in our family, bro. We got Christian Punjabi, <laughs> we got Punjabi, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a Smali, you know, yeah, we'll a Smali we Punjabi now, right? Yeah, yeah. We got everything. And it's just like, bro, at the end of the day, like, I'm going to let you choose your path. If you come to me and you're all of a sudden about something completely different, different yeah. Yeah. all the power to you. But as a, as a, as a father and as a man, I'm, I'm obviously going to try to guide my kids the way I would like to guide them. Yep. And everything else after that is their choice. Like yeah. if they want to go a certain way, that's on them. Mm -hmm. If they want to go more towards my wife's culture, Believe that is totally fine them. with me. They are still going to respect mine yep. and vice versa. If they go to more towards mine and like, let's say they're wearing, you know, but cause and everything and all and, and bugs yeah. and everything, bro. I have no issue with that. But you're gonna be respecting your mom's culture to the fullest, yeah. and yeah. that's just the way we're gonna raise our kids. So yeah. That'd you be know, pretty sad, man. yeah, man. And I and I know that some people don't, you know, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they, they're not about that. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's my life, and and that's the way we're gonna raise our kids to be open oh, and and true. and to be good members of society. That's you know? huge, man. So because yeah. like I personally grew up. It's funny we were talking about friend circles. My yeah. friend circle, my best friend's Kenyan. Yeah. yeah one's from Bangladesh and one's from Pakistan there you go that's yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah. That's my, yeah, and then yeah, obviously yeah. I have more yeah, yeah, yeah. but like my main circle those are the three people that I pretty much grew up with born and raised yeah right you know and, and then my mom accepted them with open arms right yeah. Moses used to eat roti with me that's his name he's Kenyan yeah, like yeah. He, he ate dal and everything <laughs> my friends used to come over all the time you know yeah. and, and, and it made me realize like embracing culture is an, um, it's a part of life it and is. understanding all walks of life is important not judging anybody because those three people I consider as my brothers, mm. you know, I never, it, and it has nothing to do with my religion, nothing yeah. has to do with my culture, Absolutely, it has to do with what they have within, yeah. and, and that's taught by Moses Christian, 
yeah. my other boys and uh, they, they come from background of Islam so they come from a understanding and teaching of way different but guess what it has nothing with religion man no. it has it, no. it never has to do nothing with no. religion man and people got to be cuz I, I was telling him in the last podcast I, my first girlfriend was muslim yeah. but for me it was like important for me I'm like, you know what I do want to marry someone, you know, that's Punjabi and Sikh, so, yeah. which is okay. Yeah. That's what we find too, man. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people that yeah. do feel confused, but like, yeah. oh, where do you at? Figure out what you want. Yeah. yeah. Move from there. That doesn't yeah. mean, that doesn't make you a bad person. No. Nope. doesn't make you an evil person. Yep. You you convey to that person, be like, yep. hey, I don't want that. No. And if that person be like, you know, I respect that. Yeah. That's how you move yeah. about it. You don't yeah. hold it in until, be like, fuck, now I got to get it out. It's like, no, yeah. man, whatever's yeah. in your heart, you take it out yeah. and you built a beautiful thing where you have that open. Yeah. And channel. some would say marrying within your own culture is just like, it's just better. It's easier. It's, it's just less stressful. problems and stressful. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, to yeah. each your own. Like, I'm... I could totally understand that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not built that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, one thing I do like, yeah. but you're unfiltered, yeah. man. Appreciate it, man. We're, yeah. we're, we're so, we're getting more and more filtered. Like, you know, we're talking about how our kids are being raised yeah. and understanding and even like how schools are being perceived and what they're teaching and what yeah. they're not teaching and how it can be so confusing for, especially kids, man. Yeah. It's kids. We're talking about kids yeah. and like how prevalent Dating has become at a young age. For man. sure, man. And social media is a you know leading factor to it. Yeah. You know, and just navigating through all that, man. Like, I know there's a lot of parents that might not want to say a certain thing just due to the fact of that how they will be judged by a certain individual or certain school committee. They don't want their kids to get kicked out because of the beliefs they have. This, that, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, yeah. and it's becoming way, way too prevalent, man. Yeah. I feel like we're babying this behavior to a point where like. We don't even know who we are as parents or individuals. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, mm-hmm. where does where, where the line end? Mm-hmm. You know, it, yeah. it's just like an ongoing trend. It's like, okay, now we have to accept this. Now we have to yeah. accept this. Now yeah. we accept that. Like this other, like, I think it was a month back when they had the parade in, in Toronto where like, everybody's butt naked. <laughs> how, and then how is that not public indecency? How are how those people and there's kids around all over the streets and they're looking at this like, Dad, this is cool. Yeah. Hell no, this oh, ain't man. cool. Like, what do you mean? And then how are those people not arrested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? It's like liberalization of the country we're living in. And then we look around like the other worlds of the world where we, we look at them as negative. For example, like we talked about Poland was one example. They don't take this BS. Right. Yeah. We look at other countries where like they consider as nationalists because their ideology is different. Right. We Sometimes we look down upon like a lot of um, Muslim communities yeah. or countries mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, like how in Dubai or Saudi, like you can't hold hands in public given where you are. Right. We're like, no, that's not right. Why is it not right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says who? Because I, the ideology that you grew up in? Yeah. <laughs> I think right now, man, we're in just a time, there's so much information out there. And it's like, there's so many different ways and there's and what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. And you're right. Some would say that's indecent exposure and some would say, well, we're making a movement, right? Yeah. So there's just so many ways to look at it. I think the perspective really just comes down to who do you want to be and what do you want to do? Be, yeah, yeah. You want to be out there butt naked on the street? I mean, yeah. that's your calling, I guess, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think it's just, there's so much information out there for kids nowadays, man. And Way I feel like, much, you know, like I said, as a, as, as a parent in the future, I would only want to raise my kids the way I want to raise them. Yeah. And and if and again, if they go another way or any type of way, I think that I just need to do the best to my ability mm. to, to, to raise them the way I should or the way I know how and, and same thing to my wife. And then wherever the chips fall, they fall, man. Oh, At yeah, the end of the yeah. day, like you really can't, that's their life, not yours, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. We can just do a really good job at, Harnessing, harnessing it and, and yep. making sure you know we you know we be the best parent right yeah so, and there's so much you can really control because of, really? of how much they're going yeah. to school man yeah. they, they have all this stuff going on in schools yeah the one thing i'll say well well enough is like at least in past tense if anything that's something that kind of um is con- like contradicting or something that is some sort of movement and so mm-hmm. it te- you know of course it has its peak yeah right so we have traditional it's its peak but then it's going to come down yeah and it ends up being like I don't want to talk about too much of an education system and stuff, yeah. but because there's so much things that are open-minded right. and being able to accept everything like how it should be, yeah. it ends up being is that it calms down. Yeah. Then the same people who will allow these things apologize for it yeah. and then go in the, tradi- uh, the way it was like the traditional route. Yeah. But my issue is like those kids that have been, pe- uh, that have been impact- uh, impacted, yeah. right? They're like whatever their identity and stuff what's gonna happen to those kids it's like yeah. programming the minds of kids you know yeah. and you remember that one story that came out like, it's honestly six eight months ago where 
there was a poster put up at a high school. High mm-hmm. school, okay. Mm-hmm. How to um, was it inject or smoke methamphetamine? Jeez, okay. In a high school. Wow. Okay. A poster was put up. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, what are we promoting? <laughs> yeah. And this was some. I forgot yeah. where it was. A small little town. I forgot where it was, man. And I'm like, what? No yeah. chance. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. it's like, how are we allowing this type of behavior to continue and not hold these people accountable? Yeah. It's like, this is at the, you know, cost of our kids. Yeah. You know, and and we're not speaking enough about it because people are afraid they're going to get canceled or we're like, I'm just trying to fit in. I'm trying to keep my head down. You keep your head down, you know, you're going to lose your kids or yourself along yeah. that process, you know, yeah. and you can't yeah. do that, man. You can't float in this life. It, it, it's weird to me, man. Yeah. I don't know why people don't talk about it more enough. I don't know what they're scared or, or why they even have this mindset. It's weird, man. But yeah. it, again, it's it, it's programming of people. Like even let's look, let, let, now you're in your dad. Let's look at cartoons. Yeah. Like we, we talked about many about this. They're like Coco Melon, like all these other cartoons, like they have this certain dopamine rush that it feeds to a kid right. where it, it programs their mind yeah. differently oh yeah that's fucking up their brains at an early age oh, a lot yeah. of kids you you know you probably know that you around parents and whatnot yeah. that they can't go anywhere without ipads they can't yeah. go anywhere without phones oh it's crazy they can't right? they can't yeah. be quiet they'll throw a fit in the middle of a grocery store because they don't have an iphone or exactly. this or yeah. that it's yeah. like but we as parents, we're not doing our best because yeah. we're all like, okay, give him a phone, I'll, I'll shut up. Yeah. I see it by hand. I see my niece get it. Yeah. I get she gets the treatment. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, bro, you so bad. He's like, man, I don't care. That's I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you don't care. Yeah. What you mean you don't care? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think kids, man, like they get influenced. Like you know, if you look at like when we were growing up, if you had like the 007 James Bond on N64, you know, bro. you get that. Everybody's watching, playing, Every, and everything. Yeah. But nowadays, when you look at like kids and like you know they get the the call of duty call at a young duty. age right yeah so again we're, we're we're talking about like these vulnerable minds that really they're impressionable they don't know what they're what they want out of life and they don't even know which way to go whether they like sports or whether they don't now you're putting guns and ak's and like all these guns and stuff and then and then and then you have these mass shootings in america no. yeah. and then you crazy. and then you and then you go well, what did we do wrong or, or what? No, no, no. You know what you did wrong was you <laughs> bought this kid at eight years old, yeah. you know, a GTA yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or, running you know, over or, you know, whatever. Right. And then it's, it's cool. Cause you got points, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? So, so I think yeah. literally it's, it's, it's little things like that. And I'm, and I'm going to say like 90, 95% of the minds are maybe don't go that way. But what happens to that one to 5% who do go towards go that to route or, that or now it's like, violence is like their thing or their calling and it's just like i just think that like your mind at a young age you need to be around you know and this is tough to say you need to be around the right people you do you really do you know like you know and even for younger kids like when when you're around a circle i I used to be around a lot of bad circles and not that i was ever associated but you know when you're trying to fit in you're you're trying to like oh like what's going on over here what's going on over (laughs) here and i just remember fearing the gang life like fearing just anything to do with that like i was just like no nah, not me like, like yeah, being yeah, a big yeah. guy like me I and mean, you would think i'm the first guy to jump in no but like, he definitely i'm good drugs. i'm good <laughs> he definitely i'd rather play some drugs. sports go <laughs> clean some toilets or something like i'd rather do that than than get into this life you know yeah. what i mean and I, again when kids are now 10 11 12 13 years old they're getting putting like guns in front of them and like yeah. this is cool and like this and that you know what i mean like you know even um you know all this music that comes out nowadays too it's like True. there's so much violence violence and it's just like it's like okay well if, if we're gonna teach these kids this right off the bat right off the jump like i don't know like what are we, we setting them up for success or, yeah. or yeah. not like you know are we teaching them hard work or are we teaching them easy work like yeah. no but that's the reason you know? why we're at like all-time suicide rates when it, even when it comes to men or, or, yeah. or women yeah it's both of them yeah it's, it's not even one end of spectrum it's both sides of spectrum there's a reason why the divorce rates are sky high. There's uh, there's a reason for all this. It's all not this just stuff. like yeah. oh, is this just one of those times? No, no, yeah. no, no. It's not. It, <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's such a skewed um, world we live in, and oh, we're sure. normalizing too many things that we don't need to. And then leading into that, you talk about like community and drug violence and this that. Like yeah. we always hear this uh, phrase, "Sorry, Jack." <laughs> we always hear. It. Yeah. Uh, we're from Edmonton. We don't know. Yeah. We don't. We don't have a phrase, Edmonton yeah. Jack. We don't have that. The East Coast don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that, but you yeah, yeah, yeah. such thing. Yeah, sorry, Jack. Yeah, I was yeah. always confused. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Only sorry, thing Jack. I know is yeah. Bindi Johal. I'm still around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that, man? Yeah. And how do you no, man, tell I mean, kids to I think there's a, there's a, like a really bad misconception, man. Like, <laughs> like, you come to Surrey, you're just going to like, Surrey Jack. Oh, we got like, a lot of 
good people out here, man. <laughs> yeah. You really do. And I'm the first one to say it. So, um, no, man, the Surrey Jack term, honestly, comes from like, I think Surrey, you know, if you look, go 10, 15 years back, right? Yeah. Uh, Surrey wasn't known as a very good area. Actually had the highest crime rate for car thefts at shit. one point oh. in the world, actually. Like it was like, we, <laughs> like we're talking Philly, Atlanta. No, nah, we're talking Surrey, Philly. right? So, so it was nuts. So, so at a certain point, I think, I think what we've done, like, like our government's really worked hard to, like we got a Surrey police now police and now, yeah. stuff like that. So there's a lot of movement there and a lot of, you know, a lot of up and people are actually becoming cops and, and really pushing for the community. But yeah. I think the Surrey Jack terror, man, honestly, I think it just comes from like when, you know, back in the day when Surrey was known for theft, yeah. you know, like if you tell, if I came to Toronto and I, they're like, oh man, where you from? Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would say Surrey and their reaction would be like, what? Right. Yeah. So I started saying Vancouver, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm from Vancouver, man. I'm from Vancouver, yeah. right? But, but, cause Surrey would obviously have that reputation right reputation. away, right? Like, yeah. oh, I, I never even come into Surrey. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you got to pay a toll yeah. or something or like, there's like some <laughs> booth you got to check in at, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's safe. Pay it's your dues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, our, like our area, downtown Surrey, it's becoming like the hub. You know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of people are, you know, a lot of immigrants are coming towards that area. You know, even with our business too, we see a lot of people applying for work that just came, you know, just came from India and stuff and, you know, other countries as well. And like our, our, our city is becoming that hot spot now. And, you know, so I, I really do hope this uh, Surrey Jack term dilutes at some point. So, yeah. yeah. Rap thing, rap thing's trying to catch up to y'all. Did you hear the news when they said, they said, what was that whole robbery thing about your cars? They said, leave your keys in your car. Oh, yeah. Leave, leave your keys at the front, uh, front door. Was yeah. Like, oh, no, so the, uh, at the front doors because the house were getting broken in because of the theft. Okay. They okay. said, leave leave your keys in the front of the um, front of your doors. Yeah. So this way, like, you guys are not in danger and stuff like that. It's like, what? Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so pretty a, much give your car up. Give don't your fight, car. Don't yeah. fight to keep and it. And then there yeah. was a, st- yeah. a state and state. Uh, I don't know what chief of police it was, what state it was. They're, the chief of state kind of responded to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was saying like, oh, shoot, if a person shoot caught, the you shoot them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw that too. I think that's like, Texas. Oh, it's Texas. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I mean, that's... Texas openly advises you defend yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Openly, that, That's a scary part too. Yeah. <laughs> well, Texas, even during COVID, Texas didn't believe in COVID. Like if you they went didn't. to Texas during COVID, no they were like, normal. Why are you put a face mask on? Like, what's yeah, yeah. wrong with you? Like, you're out of the norm, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. They didn't believe in any of that stuff. I mean, that shit was funny yeah. too, though. It's like when, yeah, it was, when we yeah. op- owning my stories is get they putting guidelines. You gotta have this shield, oh, and yeah. I'm like, the shield ain't here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what's this gonna do in front of me? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? It's yeah, crazy. It's like, yeah. What are y'all yeah. talking about? No, man. But... It was a crazy time. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it came and it went, right? Like now yeah, that you yeah. think about it, it's like a like a little blip in your life, like a blip in your life, but. That struggle was real. It, was. I mean, like it, it took a mental toll on a lot of people. A Especially people. the people that weren't advocated, like, to start off with, like, then were not advocate towards taking vaccines. Yeah. Mm. Imagine yeah. how many people lost their, their jobs. Oh, yeah. Lost their businesses because at the time, if you didn't, if you weren't vaccinated, you couldn't travel one. Yeah. You couldn't go nowhere. Yeah. And then they say you have to get vaccinated again. Yeah. So it's like the booster is like, okay, so yeah. you're telling me I can lose my job because I'm not taking a vaccine that you're yeah. forcing on. And the amount of people that said no, you know, commend them. Yeah, but man. yeah, it, that was a great yeah. situation that just showcased how powerful our government really are. They yeah. can shut down your bank account. Remember the trucker rally that happened in Alberta? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so yeah, what yeah. happened was, so they, they were advocating in regards to, it was a trucker rally. It wasn't COVID related, but it was just in regards to some policies and whatnot. The government froze their bank accounts. I remember this. I yeah. remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. and then how do you, in Canada, we live in a, we call it a democracy. That is communism straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kim Jong-un style. Finest. I'm coming. Yeah. Hey, y'all like, hey, y'all, yeah. ba- y'all don't want to go back home? <laughs> What's your name? Hey, don't worry, I'll find your name. More condo? Hey, freeze his bank account. It's like, what? <laughs> what do you mean freeze my bank account? Like, that's crazy talk. Yeah, man. You wouldn't hear that shit yeah. around here no more, right? I but, think we got a really good glimpse of like the way the world could react. React. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the way, you know, I remember um, all of our contracts had stopped and like, you know, you couldn't go to work. And I remember some people just being like, you know, like they got the money to pay us. They're just like, yeah. So we're, like at, right now for the foreseen future, there are no payments. payments and I'm like, yeah. what? How do you just Jeez. do that? And everything just shut down. Like, yeah. you know, grocery stores were like, all right, we're going to close at this time. Toilet paper, paper was like yeah. a freaking gold at the time. Oh, yeah. Like, like yeah. Just, you know, nobody could, crazy. yeah, crazy nobody could figure out why, what was going on. And, yeah. you know, it was just, it was definitely a turbulent time, but I'm, I'm glad we all got through it, man. I'm just no, glad was like, great everyone's, time, like, you know, yeah, everyone's safe and healthy, you know? Yep. So. And then, you know, like just looking back on your journey, man, one yep. thing I, I just want to say, um, even the viewers listening out, man, um, reach out to people, man, uh, especially people that get 
I know a lot of people do go through the dark times where you feel like the world collapsed right in front of you, especially when it comes to your parents, man. That's Absolutely the, not. You never, like, that's the hardest thing to process, you know? Yeah. Especially because you said your grandparents are still alive. And yeah, man. There's a saying where, like, you know, your parents, you know, your kids always supposed to outlive you. Yes. And outlive to you. see that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I just want to say to people out there, man, always keep your head up. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, man. No matter yeah. what the world throws at you, no matter how down you are, there's always people out there you can reach out to. Never give up on those dreams that you yeah. have. Understand, especially coming in a South uh, Asian community, understand the struggles of our parents is not um, it's not something they push on us. It's something that to be grateful of. And Absolutely. Have gratitude towards that. Yeah. Uh, be grateful for the struggles that they put forth for us to have a better life. Yeah. Never look down on them. And Change you, also, oh, sorry, interrupt. No, no, go ahead, man. No, I was just going to say, like, a big, big thing. I just remember right now, we were talking about parents and stuff like that. I was like, the one thing you got to recognize, too, is that this usually happens to a lot of us at a younger age, too, is when we recognize our parents is the trauma that we go through under our parents, right? We think that, man, they're holding us, they're holding, um, they're trying to restrict us from doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't do this. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. But you got to really switch your mind afterwards. It's just like, but you got to recognize, though, that's a way of love. Yeah. They're just yeah. care for you. Yeah. In that moment, we're like, man, why are they stopping us doing from all this stuff that we yeah. can't do? They're so strict on us. You know, like, yeah. um, we're not able to connect with them. But you also got to recognize the way they were loved back home, it was not a thing. Yeah. It was so different. for them, it's just confusion of, like, yeah. how do I exactly be emotional? Yeah. But at the same time, like. Grow and adapt, man. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, you yeah. got to really. I mean, that, this was a big, big thing, especially when I separated from my mom was like how do i connect with my dad better because for him he's he was never taught how to be emotional yeah how to have that connection yeah his way of connecting with me was to pr provide for the family for yeah. sure yeah right yeah and yeah sorry go ahead hey, no, I, no and you know what i'm glad that you touched on this because i you know my dad went through a lot of mental health and this is probably one of the biggest things that i actually regret too when i actually you know look back sometimes and i go look one thing, you know, again, even five, six, seven years ago, mental health, and I know we can throw the word, or, or, you know, around with like as kids, but yeah. our parents really have it. Yeah. Like yeah, if yeah. you really want to like sit there and, 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 and figure out your parents, the reason they probably are the way they are is because they probably went through it way harder than you did, never talked to anybody about it, yeah. always held it within themselves. And then when you question them on certain things, the reaction, because it's so fierce and deep, deep and strong yeah. and loud, it's because you don't understand their emotions and what they've been through. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Today I'm 35, and I and I put myself back in the shoes of my dad being 35. Yeah, I was, I think, seven or eight. Okay, I can still remember that time. My dad is always just, he was just always trying to figure it out. Oh yeah, like okay. figuring it out. As kids, you look at your parents like they're idols like they're your heroes like your models, you should bro. know better you should know everything i want the sickest shoes the sickest clothes <laughs> yeah. i want everything you should be able to provide that this and that do we even realize or think about the mental toll it took on them to yeah. provide the best yeah. oh okay my kid doesn't want the walmart shoes for 29 bucks he wants the 129 jordans yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do i get that for him so he's exactly. not made fun of him in schools so how do i how do i provide this for him I don't want my kid going to school and not having the best things. And that's yeah. all our parents ever really wanted. And, yeah. you know, honestly, man, you talk about mental health. And I honestly say, like, you know, with my parents not being around anymore, one thing I will say is that every now and then, go check on your parents to make sure they're okay. okay. Mm. Like, legit, just go up to them and say, Mom, Dad, you good? Yeah. And not a you good and walk away. Like, sit them down, have, like, a jaw the cup and, and actually ask them, you got anything on your mind you want to talk about? Because one thing me and my brother learned moving this is how we uh we grieve mm. is we talk talk mm. yeah and doing this podcast is also a sense of therapy mm. for yeah. me yeah. because when i get to talk about my parents like my parents are here you know what i mean like like i feel like they're here with me yeah but it also gives me that like it's okay to talk about these things yeah. it's okay when you lose somebody to be vulnerable about because for a very long time i wasn't i never used to talk about it kept it to myself everything my wife did a really good part on getting this out getting of that, yeah, yeah. and uh you know she that's two, huge kudos man. to her right yeah. but, but but like for me if i had my parents here today i would sit them down and be like well, you we ain't going nowhere until you tell me everything, everything that you're everything. feeling everything you feel about each other and 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 get that out because awareness is key we don't it even is. know it like yeah. like if you're a big guy and you want to lose some weight take your shirt off and look yourself in the mirror Awareness is key. key. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like it is awareness over everything. Yeah. Knowing information, going to the doctors, finding out if something's wrong or not. That's key. That's how then you take the next step towards 
figuring, figuring like you know what's out. the cure or whatever yeah. like what what whatever it is right or how do you make things better so i think that that's probably one of the biggest things that kids should nowadays do is like remember mental health is huge it's not a joke yeah. and your parents most likely are living with some drama or sorry trauma yeah, that yeah. you don't even know it's there yeah. and that's probably the reason why they react or they are the way yeah. they are with you yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It's, and then I think that's huge. You know? Yeah, especially for men too. Yeah. I I highly push this. Um and the thing with mental health, like mental health is a th- it is a thing for us. For sure. Right? And we kind of avoid the situ- avoid the conversation and stuff, but my biggest thing is how it's talked about. <laughs> the thing is like man, this is going to be some some people are going to say there's a sexist and all that stuff, uh, all that stuff. A a woman won't be able to relate to a man. And there are some situations where it, it like it, it is able to work up, but I always say, and I tell this to Amrit, I tell this to my buddies. Uh, remember even the birthday, birthday, yeah, yeah, birthday yeah. dinner, all those people that are in the corner. Those are the type of people that I can freely speak to them on what's on my mind, not knowing that I'll be judged or that conversation will be hold and used against me in the future. Right. Now, if you have a partner that is able to have that communication with you, um, and won't won't kind of. Uh, be skeptical about it, doubt it, or kind of, uh, kind of judge your masculinity in that sense, right. saying that you're feminine now. Yeah. Then, if you have that partner that that is open to that conversation, by all means, go for, for it. Sure. I'm not for saying sure. that you should be only speaking to your boys and stuff like that. Of course. But what I'm saying is that when you have your boys around you, yep. there's no sense of judgment because yep. they can relate to you. Yep. They can be like, okay, you're going through. You're you're not you're not being able to put food on the table. You have kids to take care of. Yep. You you can't you know this and that and all that sort. Because boys can, men can relate to each other. Absolutely. Right. And being able to have that conversation, yep. it's like, okay, I got that out. Your boys were going to also tell you straight up, be like, you need to fucking figure this out. Yeah. Cause you got kids, you got kids back home that you got to take care of. Yep. Imagine trying to live uh, the life that your parents have and your kids living your life when you were a kid, course, when you were a child. No, completely, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of my, you know, one of my best friends, uh, Charles, he, he actually lost his father and not 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 too long ago, actually, um, you know, he, he you know he lost a grandparent, and I remember just calling him and checking up on him, and I remember like even when his dad had passed, you know, or my when my mom passed or dad passed, he'd call me on the anniversary or something. We check on each other. This I, I can't even tell you how these little phone calls for a minute with him. Yeah just take that Change weight off my shoulder oh, like, yeah. like like he'll call me and just hey man i know it's your dad's anniversary just want to t- touch base with you vice versa i do the same thing with him mm. those and exactly what you're talking about Mook, is like you need that male to male camaraderie because sometimes we want to be tough but we want to be like man like i'm i'm tough but i'm yeah, yeah. i'm not feeling tough right now yeah, like, yeah you know yeah. what i mean like yeah, like yeah. i'm not emotionally tough right now but i'm, yeah, tough, I'm tough but i can't hold it and I think that it's very important, very, very, very important uh, be to, to be able to be vulnerable, but yeah. have that group, that circle. Like my circle is very tight, like yeah. very, very tight. We, we always say no new friends until it's you yeah. ask initiation. <laughs> no yeah, yeah. Initiation <laughs> is our annual Christmas uh, friends thing that we do. Yeah. Anyways, um, better bring a good gift or some good pastries, right? But but honestly, it, it literally comes down to like, we keep our circle very small As you and we, we keep each other positive. And if someone's down, we try to... Like bring up, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I'll touch a little bit on on the thing where men and women, like even with my wife, sometimes she she needs her girl time. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I might be able to tell her, like, babe, don't worry about this or don't worry about that. But she needs that hour with her, like her girl, girlfriend, girlfriend. You yeah. know, maybe a glass of wine or or a nice t- talk on the couch, just to really get a different perspective. Yeah. And that's okay. And I think that doing these things should not be frowned upon oh, or, no. or looked at oh, like, yo, bro, why are you talking to me about this? Like, no, <laughs> you have somebody in your life that's like basically telling you like, get Fuck your off. problems away from me. Yeah, yeah. That is not the right friend. No, 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 that's not when, right. when my friends have a problem or if somebody, or if I have a problem, my friends are like open arms, like, bro, what's going on? Talk to me. Talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is what we need. Like, we need this in our community. We yeah. need the camaraderie. We, we need we, this. We did not grow up with, grow up with it. Yeah. God knows that. Yeah. Our parents didn't. Nope. Yeah. And we're now being introduced to it. And some people flirt with it. Some people don't. And I feel like everybody needs to open, open it. Up. Yeah. Open up. No, you know no. What I mean? It's huge, so, man. I think yeah. even like, I, I want to say like, one thing I want to say lastly is, man, like, it, just hearing you talk and how you carry yourself and the man that you are, man, trust me, like, your parents probably looking at you like, they're fucking proud of you, man. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. No, for real, <laughs> man. You, it's, man. Uh, you, man. it's just hard to have people that come along like you uh, that change um, that perspective of how you're going to go about life. And, and and I hope viewers can really engage into that and seek some sort of motivation or, you know, if they can't seek motivation, just seek some sort of help or 
understanding how to navigate certain situations. You know, sure, bro, stuff's yeah. not easy. And um, now we have the ability to put stuff out like yeah, this for people yeah, to yeah, understand. Yeah. Like, okay, that I can resonate with that story. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, I can decipher this this certain way. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you want to change up anything? To, or you want to ask his advice? What do you want to change up for the last? <laughs> let's make it ju- let's, let's make it juicy. Should we ask one of the questions from the topic? <laughs> oh, those questions. <laughs> Should we ask one of the questions? <laughs> oh, how real are we getting? <laughs> <laughs> Not too crazy. See. <laughs> there was just, there's a couple of topics that we got with people. Let's, All right, cool. Yeah, cool. We'll, we'll finish it out Hold with that. Right, the cool. question. Let me see what, what I can find here. Couple of viewers yeah. asked yeah. like these random ass questions. No <laughs> worries, man. <laughs> Some of them were interesting. Some of them not worthy to put on YouTube and stuff. That's but it got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to cut some stuff out. <laughs> you want to get serious or more kind of? Honestly, bro, you guys like I'll let you pick, man. You can go with whatever you want, man. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have no, uh, no preference. You know what I mean? Okay, I got two. I got two. All right, go ahead, bro. Okay. Go okay, ahead. Should a man have a say so on what a woman should wear in public? Sorry, say that one more time. So should a man yeah. have a say so on what <laughs> should on what a woman should wear in public? <laughs> okay, you know what's crazy about this is my <laughs> wife will literally put on her clothes, come up to me, and be like, yo, you like good, thumbs you up, thumbs down, oh, right? Shit, I do good. the same thing with her. But I can okay, so I can understand what, what you're referring to. I personally believe in wear whatever you want to eat your own. Yeah. Um, as a man, if I don't like something my wife is wearing or if I think it's gonna cause some attention. I don't think that you're stepping out of place by giving your opinion. opinion. Yeah. But if you think even for a second that she has to listen to you, you've got it all. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at the end of the day, I mean... It's a respect thing. It's a respect thing. And at the end of the day, like, I mean, if you choose the right partner... They'll know better. They'll know better. They won't put you in that situation. Yep. So it's like, if you don't like it and your girl's doing it, yeah. I mean, there might be a conversation to be had. No, like, 100%. About that, you know? like, like, sure. And, and vice yeah. versa. If it's you're good. like... You got a six pack, and brother, you're walking around with your shirt, shirt off, off, and your girl is next to you. She's seeking like, attention. I, I'm sure she can make a comment like, "Put your shirt back on." Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you know. So, no, I mean, good. I think it works both ways. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's funny. Though. That's Let's a funny get, question. Yeah. Let's get a second one here. Yeah. Yeah. I have to answer that the right way because I know my wife's gonna watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You I'd be politically color, correct. I know because I had to have a conversation with my girlfriend. No, that's fair. Because she asked me, she's like, "Will you ever tell me what to wear?" I'm like, "No." I'm like, "I know the respect that you have for me. Exactly. You're not gonna put me in that." position to even judge you exactly like, babe like what are you doing yeah I, I know you're not gonna do that and nowadays with social media like you'll figure out your person like yeah. like you'll know if they want attention you'll see it and if they don't want attention you'll see that too yeah. so okay yeah. so how much time do we have you have enough time? last question yeah last question last question <sighs> make it a go one. <laughs> don't fuck it up how about this <laughs> don't fuck it up ahead, really interesting we never talk about this go ahead bro. you're gonna be put on the spot here all right bro, uh yeah. should men be worried about a woman's body count <laughs> Oh, there's all that coming. Cut. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um. I'll t- okay. Personally, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I always have this. Uh, I always tell my girlfriend too. She ha- she's. We still have a different opinion on this. I think for me, always has. If if, if I for me, because this is what I possess. Okay. Like if I told my person be like, yo, like some people that be walking at seven, eight, nine, ten, like that's crazy. I'm not going. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going for that. For me. Like your intimate relationship, you gotta preserve it for a certain amount. If you give it to everybody, then it's not really yeah. preserved for that particular person. Yeah. And then also, it stimulates in your mind. You're gonna constantly think, you're gonna be comparing. Yeah. You're mm-hmm. always gonna be. Gonna as be much as they're gonna yeah. be like, no, this, that, yes, you're gonna yeah. be. That's how human work, that's how human, you know, anatomy works. We're gonna be comparing. And so I told my girl, I'm like, man, for me, a person, you know, like three, four, I'm like, shit. I'm like, for me, I'm like, I know who I am, who yeah. I've been with. I'm like, I try to keep it at that. So, a lot of people, it gets me in the hot water sometimes with the yeah. conversation with her, but yeah, you know, yeah. at least I'm real. I'm not, I don't try to be like, yeah. no, it's all good. Later and be like, nah, babe, that's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm going to say, to each your own. At the end of the day, <laughs> to each your own. But, but like, at, I think that you should know the person you're with. At the yeah. end of the day, like, if, you're, if your person has a higher body count, like, you should know they're more that way you know what i mean and and if your person doesn't and and, you know and they're more a little bit more on the conservative side i don't think that anybody's a good person or bad person person. i think that like if a girl has a bigger body count it it, it could mean she just put herself in you know not so many good situations where she got burned you know what i mean and 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 to be honest with you some some dudes can be real bad to girls you know what i mean like like they're only in it for that so 
I just think that at the end of the day, man, judge a girl on based on like who you know her as, not not as what she did in the past. It, w- w- judge her on based on who she is today yeah. and who you think she's going to be in the future. Because future, yeah. if you base it off everything that she did bad, well then, I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure everyone's, you got, have their, answer, yeah. everyone's yeah. got their secrets or their whatever, but it's yeah. just like, at the end of the day, I think you got to base it off what you know and like moving forward. Like, you yeah. know, not not the past, you know what I mean? But interesting, interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. from my own perspective, yeah. the way I think it is like, okay, well, I kind of separate it in a way. I'm like, okay, what's easy for a man and what's what's easy and difficult for both sides? Sure. So for a woman, what's easy for her is that she has attraction and beauty. Okay. That's the first thing that sells. So the thing is like, you, imagine just how many men are coming up to her, coming sure. up to her. And the fact that sex itself is so easy for a woman, it just, I become very judgmental in the sense that if you're giving your body away to so many people, yeah. I'm like, how, how, like I have, I have to think in a sense like, okay, how are you going to be in this in the future then? Because mm-hmm. my thing is like, if it's easy for you, if you're going to attract what's easy, and you're not really going to go through what's difficult. Right. Why should I be with you in the first place? Because every right. other man has been with you. A lot of people don't know. Because yeah. I also say it's just mentally, yeah. biologically itself. Like for a woman, a woman has a lot more oxytocin. Right. Oxytocin is what it's a bonding. It's really right. it's part of the relationship body. Yeah. Right. So you lose oxytocin through sex. Right. So my thing is like there's also this. It could be a correlation to about divorce, the divorce, uh, high divorce rates. Yeah. But my thing is like, okay, if you've been ran through. Yeah. Or if you have a high body count, yeah. what's the likelihood of you getting a divorce in the future then? Right. When you're, when you're married. I mean, that's a good way. And I'm not disagreeing with that. I think the other perspective could be that, you know, again, that person could have been just duped a lot of times. Yeah. Like, you know, like, true. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. There, there's a lot of guys that I know and a lot of women too. Deception. But, but mostly guys, like, they will decept. They will yep. do everything. So, do so whatever, it's like, yeah. you might have somebody, like, really true to herself. Yeah. And, like, she just wants, like, you know, some people say, like, when a girl, like, she's younger, she's all, all she thinks about is getting married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly believe that. Like, because anyone I've ever been with or anyone I've even talked to, like, girl, like, friends that are girls, Everybody has that ambition to be married yeah. and marry the husband and have kids and all that. So I think that, that there is that persona there. Yeah. Yeah. And what people are trying to do sometimes in call it desperate situations or in situations where they think they're liked, but they're really not being liked. They're just being used. Yeah. I think that that happens a little bit more than what we could. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think we all know if somebody's really, really like a high body count, they're uh, promiscuous in a promiscuous, certain way. Yeah, you can yeah. tell. Like, yeah, you can yeah. just tell that that person's always putting themselves out yeah, there. Behavior, but yeah. what would you say to somebody who is super, super conservative, has a high body count because she got duped a lot? Maybe, yeah. maybe it's not high. Maybe it's just in your liking, it's just high, right? Yeah, yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of that yeah, that yeah. happens in our culture, right? Yeah. Like, like, like we, I feel like, guys will date a lot whereas women try to just stay with the one person, person you know yeah. and i and i could be wrong but i i've no, seen that a lot in our true, culture yeah. right like it's inter- you know well it, that's where that's where the aspect of like where where you're you in your yeah, situation yeah, yeah. yeah. And men men are f- at fall for it yeah man. and that's yeah. the fault that's yeah. where the problem yeah. is like and okay. girls are bad too i'm just saying men yeah, yeah. are a little bit more yeah yeah, yeah. yeah a little bit worse on that stuff. And, yeah. and that's where yeah. i was gonna you know change where it's like okay the same thing for e- what's easy and hard for men yeah yeah it's easier for a man just to waste money to go out of clubs to bar mm-hmm. uh, to do you know whatever and to enjoy the entertainment right there's a reason why later these guys in their 30s or 40s are crying like like as if they haven't built their life exactly. it takes fucking yeah. time to build your life absolutely yeah. like why do you focus on that shit instead of trying to trick these women into exactly. just having sex, right? Yeah, exactly. So, it's, it's no. a, I mean, ask for something you possess. Don't ask for things that you can't attain yourself. I mean, don't ask for outlandish things that you know you can't, you're incompetent of providing or having. Don't ask for realistic shit. Uh, yeah, and then no. I think go from that perspective. So That's a good point. Yeah. Man. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. on that note, ma'am, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you yeah. for yeah. taking time. Appreciate I know. Guys. Yeah. Hope you have a beautiful yeah. time on your vacation. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. I appreciate <laughs> it, guys. Yeah. And I just want to say, just before we cut off, man, um, yeah. your guys' movement, Everything you guys are doing, um, respect to you guys, kudos to you guys. And I honestly believe you guys are just going to like blow up one day. <laughs> and it's just like, it's literally like it's a ticking time bomb yeah, and it's yeah. going to happen. And I really do appreciate you guys having me and and being like that, kind of like that safeguard for the community where we can sit, talk and like actually have good conversation and not yeah. be worried about what we're going to say. say. Yeah. So I really appreciate you guys putting this platform out here, no, man. Appreciate Thank you, man. It, appreciate it's you guys. It's a beautiful yeah. conversation. Everybody tune in and leave your thoughts, yeah. man. All right. I'm not in a peace, guys. Right, peace.